In this video, I want to introduce to you how to use a script in Prot. So the task here is the following. I have this directory of audio files here, and it has some audio files in it. I want to go through all the audio files in this directory, create a text grid for each one, and annotate um, the text grids to segment out the segments in each of these WAV files. So let me show you how you can use a uh, script or use a prot script to help with that. Okay. So to open the script in prot, you click on open, read from file. Okay. So now um, navigate over to where a script is. So I want to open this script here called gridmaker.prot. And I'll go ahead and choose that to open it. And you can see this new window pops up. This is the whole script. It's just a little text file. And uh, you might notice that some lines start with this pound sign, and some lines don't. The lines that start with the pound sign, those are comments, uh, and uh, Prot will not interpret those lines as commands. Other lines, Prot will interpret as commands. So let's first uh, see what happens when we have the script in, ac in action. So if we click on Run, uh, we can then run the script. And this little dialog box appears, and it's asking us to enter directory where the audio files are. Um, another argument I'll explain later. The extension for the files, audio files, here uh, dot wave, and then what tiers we want to have appear in the text grids created. OK. So let me go ahead and hit OK. Let's see what happens. All right. So you can see a few things. So I have this window pop up. So this is the first audio file alphabetically in that directory. Um, you might also notice the object window uh, pops up with three different objects, a strings list, and that's going to be the list of files to go through in this audio directory. And then the sound and the text grid we're currently working on. So. The third window is this window that will allow us to say, OK, we're done editing whatever we want in this text grid. Let's move on. So we can go ahead and annotate this however we want, adding intervals, labeling them, whatever. Um, you might notice the last tier is a point tier. I'll explain how I was able to create that as a point tier later, but for now, you can see I have this brilliant segmentation of caught, um, and now I'm ready to move on to the next file. So I go to this window, make it active by clicking on it, and hit continue. All right. Now I have the next audio file pop up. I can play it really quick. Nail. And I'll do whatever I want in here to annotate it. And then I can say, OK, I'm done. Let's continue. All right, here's the third one. And I can do whatever I want. Uh, and OK, I'll say I'm done. And now I uh, click on this window and say continue. And here's one more file. Remember, we had a total of four, I think. So I think this should be the last one. All right, brilliant segmentation. We're done here. I'm going to say continue. OK. And you can see now, finally, I'm done. It says prot info window, done four files annotated. So if I go back and look in the original directory, lo and behold, I had those four WAV files before, and now I have four accompanying text grid files as well. So you can see that the script did exactly what I wanted to do. I have annotated each one of the WAV files in the directory I specified, and it saved the uh, text grids I created. OK, let's go into a little more detail about what's going on in the script here. So remember when I clicked on Run, I had this window pop up, and I was then given an opportunity to enter the arguments for uh, what directory path I wanted to use, uh, what the tiers were, and everything else in here. So it's no coincidence that if you look at top of the script, there's this area with a form. And you notice 
that directory file name initial substring extension to your wait a minute that's exactly what has appeared here in this window and what I've typed to the right of them um, here users amoeba documents blah, 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 or dot wave word segments notes those are what have appeared by default in the window so this area of the script is a place where you can set defaults for what will appear in the window when you click run and so what I like to do is um, if I find that I'm using uh, text grids of the same kind of tiers over and over again or I'm using directory paths that are very similar I like to go ahead and type them in here and sort of hard code them in so I don't have to keep on typing them every single time I'm running the script because anything you type in this window will not be saved so the next time you use a script you'll have to type it all again so how do you find the directory to type in here I'll show you here how to do this um, on uh, Mac OS and uh, in another short video I'll show how to do it on a PC but okay so I can go to finder and you can see I'm in the audio directory and if I click on one of the uh, wave files in the audio directory and then right click I can click on get info and then this little info window pops up and the important information here is where you might need to click on this down arrow general to have the details pop up but where gives me the directory path so I can just click on this and then copy it either using uh, edit copy or the keyboard command would be command C so I just clicked on or I just typed command C and then I can go back to prot and let's get rid of what I typed originally and um, if I then paste it in with uh, command V or edit paste you can see that yay I have my directory path the crucial thing that's missing here is I need an additional forward slash at the end here um, otherwise the script won't be able to find the directory actually I can show you that so um, let's say that I forgot to type the forward slash and I say run okay let's try to run it yeah see prot is not finding the directory so it's not finding any files to annotate so make sure you put in that forward slash there the script is expecting it um, for PC users that might be a backslash I'll describe that in another short video okay um, the last thing I want to say here about uh, typing in directly into the script in this section of the form to set defaults is um, you have to be very careful about extra white space so suppose I had accidentally had an extra space here so I have the back or sorry the forward slash as I said is you have to have but then I have an extra space if I run the script let's see what happens again it's not finding the right directory because it's expecting there to be some kind of space in directory path so it's very important to not have extra white space in there so now I can click on run and if I click on run you can see that I'm navigated back to uh, director, the directory that we worked in and the other thing that's neat I want to show you is that this time I already had a text grid in that directory so the script will help me then just open the text grid I already had and then I can do any additional edits I want and then click continue and so forth to go through the script um, you can also hit stop if you want to interrupt the script and stop and not go through all the files in the directory okay so um, the last thing I'll say is that you can save the script by going to file save and then that'll be nice because the next time you open up the script you'll already have these defaults for the arguments uh, entered in for the directory file name and tier um, 
I guess one little bonus goodie I'll just say is what is this optional thing? You can enter this file name initial substring. That will allow you to just go through a subset of the files in your directory. So if you go back to the directory, you can see that um, two of the WAV files start with S. That is their file names start with S, so sash and sheaf. So if I only want to go through audio files in the directory that start with S, then I could type S here. And then hopefully when I click on run, then you can see here I have, I want files that start with S. Then, aha, I'm only getting sash here. And then if I click on continue, sheaf. Okay. Um, and the real last thing, because I had forgotten to say this, is I promised to tell you how it was that I specified that note should be a point tier. Um, so the way I did that was to type notes again further down in the script here. And that's basically doing um, what when you're creating a text grid in Prot and you remember you type uh, the name of the tier, if you want it to be a point tier, you type it twice. That's exactly what that's doing here. Okay, so now you should know how to use a script.